Hey, it's Mike with Riding in the Ozarks, and today we're gonna do a three hole oil change on a Twin Cam 103 touring bike, my 16th Street Glide to be exact. Now, we're gonna use the Let's Roll Dolly and Lift for this particular instance, because when I did a video about the Dolly and how come I liked it so much and thought it was the best motorcycle lift for your garage, Someone questioned and said that they didn't think you could do an oil change while using it. Like it was, the lift would be in the way in somehow fashion. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but you know, let's prove it. Here's the dolly. Now it's important that the dolly goes in from the kick side stand. And I want you guys to see something. You'll see right there, I have two pieces of black tape. Those are kind of marking where the drain plugs are. So when I put this in, I'm gonna have to not cover those. So that means it'll have to go in here, but I think that's gonna be okay because it's gonna be right behind the kickstand where I would want it anyway. And I have an oil pan that'll go between this. We'll show you in a minute. All right, now I've kind of looked over the bike, tried to get this lined up. The Let's Roll Dolly and Lift does take a 7 8 socket. And I'm gonna put that about right there. That should hit the frame rails on the other side just fine. I'm gonna start cranking it up. And this thing will just lift the bike right up. No need to worry about anything. Just make sure you're under the frame good and start cranking. Bike is lifting and coming straight up on the lift. Nobody else is holding it anywhere. I'm not worried. I've done this before. Now I have my lift in the upper position. It has two positions. So we have to go pretty high for this. But since we're gonna be doing oil change and I gotta get oil pans underneath it and my hands and wrenches and everything else, I wanna take it up as high as I can. Look at that. Right there where the frame bend starts to go up and uh, right there behind the primary on the back that should give us plenty of room let's go set it down all right now if you didn't see my original video on the let's roll dolly and lift you may not be you may not realize just how stable this thing is once you get it up on the dolly i mean it is really stable i'm going to show you that real quick and then we're going to get started on the oil change I mean, I'm pulling on it. The, the whole thing will move, but it is very, very stable on this dolly. It's not going anywhere. It would take a lot of work to try and knock that off of that dolly. So I'm not worried about the bike falling on me or anything else. Well, I'm underneath it doing this. Now there's about 14 inches in here. I went to the dollar store and picked me up a metal pan for $1.25. Fits right in between there. It's gonna work out great for catching the oil. Yeah, I may have to drain it after the engine oil before doing the transmission if it's too full, but I've got another one. So for 250, I got two drain pans. Right here on the front of this pan is the engine oil plug. That's what we're gonna take out for the engine oil. Transmission is right up in here. And we'll pull that next, but we're gonna get the engine oil first. Now, before they start, they recommend you loosen the dipstick. I don't do that till after I have the drain plug out because it actually makes the oil not flow as fast. So I don't get as much on my fingers if I get a little bit of leakage when I'm pulling the plug. You do it whatever way you prefer. Got a little bit on my fingers, but my lovely assistant's gonna bring me a towel. But watch what happens when I open this dipstick tube. That flow will get heavier. There she goes. And that's why I don't open the dipstick tube until after I've got the bolt out. Now, I just did this 3,000 miles. You may be wondering, I'm checking my rag for, you know, metal or anything that's on the drain plug stopper, but it looks really clean. 
The recommendation is every 5,000, and you might be wondering why I'm doing it at 3,000. That's because we're getting ready to go to Sturgis, and I know I'm going to put over 3,000 miles on it, which means I would be past due for an oil change or I'd have to do it up there. And I do not want to do it up there. And it might not be a big deal to go a thousand miles over, but at this point with 70,000 miles on the bike almost, I would rather be proactive and change it before I go than after. Same 5 8 plug on the transmission as uh, the engine oil, break it loose. Feels like it's finger loose already. It is. Again, I'm not gonna crack the dipstick till after I get it all the way out. And I actually press up on this as I loosen it to help keep it in there so I don't get drainage. Once I feel like it's loose, pull quickly look at there all right there's my transmission plug i'm gonna clean it up i'm gonna check it for debris looks like i got a little bit of o-ring material here my o-ring looks a little just maybe degraded is the right word so i'll replace that i have new ones of those as well but we're gonna check that we'll let that dry and see if there's any material in there don't feel any kind of metal material from the transmission so that's good clean that off real good clean that off we're going to replace that ring now i didn't do the transmission the last time i did the oil i do it every other time so that's why this doesn't have a new orange ring on it like the oil did in there and in the groove and run it down that's what works for me here's a new orange Gas. I buy these O-rings like 50 in a pack online. They work for the oil and transmission plugs. I know there's a big debate about what oil or transmission fluid to use. My mechanic, when I first bought my bike, used Spectro for everything. Uh, he is retired, but I still use the same oils that he used in the bike since it was new. He swears by Spectro. I know they are a, a sponsor for Cycle uh, source magazine and so uh, I'm happy using their products I've had good luck and I trust my mechanic and when he said that's what to run that's what I run 2050 in the engine gear guard 85 140 in the transmission and then spectros primary heavy duty I don't run any synthetics because of the way this frame is cut out up here I can't see in there so I'm gonna put the drain plug in the socket then put it in there do this by feel. Torque specs for the transmission drain plug are the same as the engine drain plug, 14 to 21. So I don't have to change my settings on my torque wrench. We'll get her cranked in here. There, she's starting to hit. There, she breaks over. That's it, don't get carried away. I mean, if you want to go up to 20, then change your settings, but I'm happy with about 16 to 18. That's usually what I set it at. We're gonna go ahead and drain our transmission fluid as well. We'll be doing the primary next. I'm gonna set it up like that so it can kind of drain back off that edge of the pan. Primary case drain plug is 5.8. It's right here in front of the clutch inspection cover. Put that on our towel. Now, the only way to get any air into this to make it drain any quicker is to crack open the clutch inspection cover, which we have to do to fill it anyway. So we'll go ahead and at least uh, break that loose. Your fluid level should be below your clutch inspection cover, so you shouldn't have to worry about as you're taking this apart having any fluid escape from the inspection cover. And if you've already cracked the drain plug, most of it should be out by the time you get to this point anyway. There we go. Now I'm gonna inspect my drain plug before I start putting anything back together. So I have a little bit of material on the drain plug here. 
don't know if I can get that where you guys can see that get to focus on it but there's a little bit of material on the end there that's kind of typical in the clutch area I'm gonna go ahead and put the primary plug back in torque specs are the same as for everything else I don't have to adjust the torque wrench there she is breaking over all right guys my primary takes 34 ounces wet on a change that means if you don't completely disassemble it it's 34 ounces if you completely disassemble the primary pull the outer cover that kind of thing it's gonna take more fluid I think it's 38 but don't quote me on that but a standard quart is 32 ounces so we need two extra ounces so we have another quart and a measuring cup now I buy these on Amazon they're graduated cups they have cup and ounce measurements on it on one side and milliliters and cc's on the other but it makes it a nice way to get two extra ounces exactly so we're going to pour our two ounces and we'll pour it in and then we'll pour our quart in If anybody's interested, I'll have a link in the description as well for this little funnel kit. It comes with this one for the primary, as well as just a regular funnel for filling your oil and transmission, and a little pan kind of funnel for catching oil when you take your oil filter off, which we still have to do. We still gotta change that as well. I'm just getting the fluids done first. Some people will tell you to replace the gasket every time. Uh, I generally inspect the gasket. I just changed this 3,000 miles ago, so I'm not putting a new gasket on. Mine looks good, but to each his own. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea to replace it every time if it makes you more comfortable. There is a pattern to how you tighten these, and I'm going to put them in in that pattern, but I'll show you when I torque them down. By the way, torque specs on these are 84 to 108 inch-pounds. You torque it down, you start at the top. Make sure you have these pushed in good. You do not want to strip these. These are T27s. There we go. One, two, three, four, Five. That is your pattern. Okay, primary's done. Let's go ahead and get the oil filter off and let it start draining. This is my little funnel to catch oil when you're taking your oil filter off. Now, I run it back underneath here and get it back in there as best as I can. And then because I've got lowers and I don't want this getting on my lowers. I kind of lay my socket tray kind of against it just to weight it, to force it to pull down and point so that it'll drain down into my pan there. That's just the way I do it. Now I use K&N oil filters with a little socket head on them. It's 11 16 socket. Make sure you have your ratchet set the right way. That's tightening, so there's loosening. Here comes our oil. Now I don't get in a rush here because I'd rather not make a mess. She just popped right off. We'll let it drain. You can see it's hitting my oil pan down there. That's good. A little bit always kind of seems to hit the way this is made that front mount for the floorboards, but it runs right off, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna kind of hold it with my finger. I use K&N 171 filters. You can get them in black or chrome. This one happens to be black. So that's what we have on the shelf. That's what we're gonna use. I was always taught to prime the filter a little bit. Some people do this, some people do not. The manual doesn't call for it. It's just a personal preference. If you don't know what I mean by priming the filter, it's I put a little bit of fluid inside the filter. So we just put a little out here on the outside edge to dip our finger in and you lube the gasket real good before you put it in. 
Now, you only put this on hand tight, so you don't want your hands to be greasy and oily where you can't get a good grip on this. So, make sure you have a good grip on the oil filter before you screw it in and your hands aren't going to slip. Hand tight is all you need. If you're not sure, or if you're having a hard time getting a hold of it with the nut, you can do just a little bit, but that's it. That's all I do. Okay, my bike takes quarts. I just put the first quart in. This is the second quart. I will run the bike and then let it set and drain down and check the fluid level. I prefer for it to be a quarter of a quart low, not plumb full. Some people have problems with bikes puking oil if they run them plumb full. I would much rather be a hair under full than over full. From what I understand and what I've always been told, it's harder on seals and you're more likely to blow a seal if you're running the bike over full. Okay, transmission right here, and that takes a 3 8 hex. Once you get it cracked loose, it's pretty easy to take open. All right, transmission fluid on my bike is 28 fluid ounces, 32 ounces in a quart. So, do we just guess? No. We pour four ounces out of this quart into the measuring cup precisely, leaving us 28 ounces in here. I use all 28 ounces of here. Then I can take these four ounces and put them back in here and have a partial jug for the next time. I like to make sure I get every bit of it because it's supposed to be 28 ounces exactly. So I just let it sit upside down in there and until it's done draining. Make sure I get it all. Transmission dipstick is only like 25 to 75 inch pounds. Uh, to be honest, I'm gonna put it in just a hair over finger tight right now because we're gonna check the fluids after we start the bike and let everything warm up and flow through the bike once. All right, bike is down off the lift. I'm about to start the bike up, let it run, then we'll check the fluids. But that's pretty much how you do a three hole oil change. And you can do it with the let's roll dolly and lift, it works great. If you don't have room in your garage for a big lift, then this thing is definitely the way to go, in my opinion. I still believe it's the best motorcycle lift and dolly for your garage. Now, if you have a shop, then yeah, a big table lift is nice but not everybody has room for that. Me and a buddy were talking about this weekend. He's got a one car garage. He needs something that he can put up out of the way when he's not using it. And the Let's Roll Dolly and Lift is great for that. As you can see here, I have 2,951 miles since my last oil change on there. We're gonna reset that. I also keep maintenance records and we'll look here, 64,265 miles on the bike when I did the oil change. So I'll mark that down. I'll be ready to do this again at about 70,000 miles. Now we'll let the fluids drain down. We'll check our fluids, make sure we're good to go. And uh, we're ready to ride for Sturgis.